the to the stage uh mark falmer who is uh, the the you know the that's the ceo at uh, robotic uh, assistance devices and now a, a lot of people will remember you mark from uh, other places in the world of security and you're now working in robotics i think this is a big question let's let let's do an intro but let's also think about whether or not tomorrow's msp and mss will bundle robots um welcome uh how are you doing i'm great felon how are you having a having a great time it's 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 a great intellectual curiosity session um how did you get into robots tell us about your new your new uh role yeah great uh, great question fellow and and thank you for that uh, that last discussion it was fascinating i i, I want to talk about unicorns too and uh, some great uh, some great comments but no as as you know we we we've met before we've spoken a fair bit and and uh, I've been in the security service space for years, I, going on going on 25, I guess it is more or less. And and um, the security service space, which is you know my my focus, I guess my area of specialty, if I can say that, uh, is changing, evolving, and, and facing challenges that it's that it has never you know seen uh, seen in the past. And and uh, so I find it, I found it. An interesting opportunity to jump on with uh, with the with the um, the team at Robotic Assistance Devices because we're really looking to sort of change that mindset of hey what can be done by a person in a service setting versus what can be done by a device a robot you know or something or something else in a service setting and and you know but by by no means are we saying hey you know there are a hundred replace a hundred with a hundred or something else you know, not at all. It's really looking at, you know, what's the problem, what needs to be solved. What's the deliverable for that security service um, uh, to, to, to be effective, to be efficient. So yeah, innovating the space, which is, uh, which is key. Well, I mean, I'm excited by this topic, but for those people who are sort of think, Oh, it's too futuristic. Do you think the security space is ready for robots? Yeah, great. Again, um, so it's not too futuristic because just kind of the collision of the different technologies that are available or that are readily available, we all use every day, right? I mean, whether, you know, from your mobile phone to, you know, on-demand uh, on demand television to to taking an Uber and so on, all that, all those technologies we're all used to and 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 we deal with and we uh, we interact with on a daily basis in our in our personal lives, uh, they're there, they're accessible and 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 we can use them now. Is the industry ready for some of the innovation and, and kind of some of the change of mindset? You know, that's really where some of the pushback, you know, comes from. Um, you know, I don't think I'm, I'm telling any tales out of school when I say it's, you know, it's a risk averse industry and, and kind of has to be right due to the nature of the role. Uh, it is um, it's an industry that's not maybe, you know, ready to jump on board sort of the latest the latest technology and and, you know, this technology that we're talking about is not even the latest technology. I mean, there, there, there's, there's, it has been around. It has been around for a while. So there are some, some, some barriers or some fear to that. You know, that that come around with, hey, I'm used to doing it this way. I've been doing it this way for so many years. Why would I change it? Do I want to put that spotlight on myself uh, for for the change? Now, I think what's going to what, what what is happening and is going to continue to happen is. Um, we're not going to have a choice, right? I mean, if you think about sort of frontline security officer roles uh, and and the pains kind of associated with that, and and even just industry perception of that, you know, we can't just continue and expect that um, that those functions, those roles, that those those jobs are going to be you know, are going to continue as uh, as time goes on. So 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 let's take a step back. Let's let's paint a picture of what type of robotics we're talking about. I'll, are we talking about uh, four-legged uh, uh, dog robots? Are we talking about the the the, the things that go around airports uh, with the non-ionizing uh, detectors? Are we talking about replacement humans, flying robots? W what are these robots, and what do they look like? Yeah, and, and that's that's another one of the challenges that I could have touched on in the previous question is everybody has their own perception of what's a, what is a robot, right? And and um, you know when when I told my kids I was joining robotic assistance devices, they were like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. You know, they they pictured we, that we would have a, a slew of robots running around, maybe emptying the dishwasher and uh, and and helping clean up the dishes after after a meal, but. People's perception of what is a robot uh, really, really varies. So yeah, I know of course you know there are four-legged ones, there are ones on wheels, and so on. You know the the, the way that 
we're looking at it and specifically looking at the industry is um, something capable of some sort of an autonomous response, right? Which to me is really the initial value. If you think about for those boring, repetitive tasks that just sort of happen, you know, kind of over and over that you have maybe somebody sitting behind there and just, you know, kind of staring at a screen. Well, why doesn't, why doesn't a device do that? Why doesn't the device do the first warning on a trespass? You know, why doesn't uh, the device uh, greet somebody in a friendly way or greet somebody in a not so friendly way, depending on the situation as, as a first one. Now, as a situation or an incident, you know, or potential incident maybe escalates, well, now maybe you have to have some kind of a human interaction to, uh, to that point. And that's where, you know, robots in a lot of the cases are also, um, are also something that you can access remotely. So think about sort of personal, you know, safety and so on and personal, uh, um, uh, or as a tool for assessing that from, from a remote distance, so from a safer, a safer distance. So um, I guess, yeah, the, the short answer to the question would have been yes to all of the above the examples that you, uh, that you gave a second ago. But uh, I mean, I can, I can share my screen. I've got a couple of sort of very quick examples that I can, I can show you just to give you an idea. Yeah. And then, you know, um, yeah, it becomes very sort of, you know, device focused or machine focused, but um, I think it's good to sort of, okay, look at the device and now think about, hey, what am I gonna, what am, what am I able to solve with, uh, with, um, with using, uh, using autonomous, uh, autonomous devices. So let me just jump up here onto my second screen and um, let's hope this goes smoothly because we, uh, we didn't rehearse, right? You can see my screen, Tom? Yeah, yeah, just maximize it or, or that's fine. Perfect, right? yeah, I'll just pop it open like that. And we see the sort of the main device. So let's take a look at this one here and a very short clip and, and uh, I'll turn down the... Uh, background music but think about you know you see you see something or, or a very common security service you know or a function of a security service provider is hey do, do perimeter patrols go confirm an alarm um go get some kind of visual verification of what's going on so that we can escalate right so you think about uh, sending a person out to go do something or sending a device to go out and do something so in this case you know, you're meeting, you're meeting Romeo and I wore the, I wore my Romeo t-shirt today because it's, it's just sort of a fun, a fun thing, but you're seeing it, you know, essentially on a patrol and now, you know, a little bit rendered, but now patrolling in a parking lot and doing different things. But if I pause it here really quickly, what else does security do? What else do security services do? Well, they do so much more, right? I mean, from, you know, being greeters, being friendly, being uh, welcoming people in. So, why wouldn't a device like this in, the, in, a, in, a, in a more public setting be able to approach people and be a resource? Hey, how do I get to something? So you walk up to it and you interact, you interact with it. Um, how can you do that in a non-menacing way, right? So how can you have maybe, you know, this device driving around, someone needs to interact with it. Well, now it's a two-way two -way video call, right? And again, you think about it from a, okay, that's all well and good. You know, we're just sort of removing slightly a person from it. Again, a lot of the interactions can be autonomous. The alerting can be can be autonomous. So that that's sort of you know my take on on you know what the benefit is for uh, for, for for devices. You think about uh, them out in the wild, as we call it. And okay, so that's 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 painted a nice picture. And, and Rochelle, uh, thanks. Uh, it, it inquires if it can deliver hot pizza. Uh, which, which <laughs> I... That's the second time I've gotten that question. That was the second like when can I get my pizza from uh, from uh, from one of the devices. Because 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 uh, everyone talks about the last uh, what's it the last few feet um, from from curb to the to the door. Um, anyway, let let's then extrapolate this robotics uh, topic for our MSS MSP and then customer audience because an MSP is going to sit there and say, but surely my customers won't want a robot. Um, and an MSS will, will will say, but surely that's something from the physical security world. But I would argue that robotics as a service is uh, a bundled package, just as much as MDR, XDR, CDR. I I, well, I don't know. What 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 do you think, Mark? 
Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And it's, it's definitely a bundled package, right? Because it's, uh, we're not quite at the stage where, you know, I think I saw a comment go by, you know, RoboCop, you know, is this, is this where we're going or, or sort of, you know, pizza delivery and, and, and so on. We're not at a stage where the human is completely out of the, out of, out of the loop. We're getting much more autonomous and much more automated, right? But we're not, you know, kind of completely out of the loop. So what's the tie-in? You know, how do we escalate from, okay, autonomous response, now human remote response. Well, now, you know, we all know certain situations. And of course, you know, my background's in physical security. So I guess I kind of have those, you know, some oftentimes those blinders on or that, that, uh, that uh, point of view on is how do we interact with the situation on site? I, I, I cheated maybe a little bit and, and showed you sort of a moving device, but devices don't need to move too, right? I mean, they can be, they can be fixed in, in, a, in a location, uh, doing a very specific, specific role. And whether that's on your way into a building, or that's on the side of uh, on, on the side of a building, or in the middle of a parking lot, um, and so on. Yeah, because in the future, there's no reason why. I mean, if you've got completely cloud-based, all right, that's one thing. But if you if you've got a hybrid architecture and you've got an MSP looking after you, there's no reason why maybe a super robot in the future might not be able to do some rudimentary fixing in your server room. I'm, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, just, I just feel that this, of all topics, is the thing that stops the silos between physical and cyber. And, and just to kind of jump in on that a little bit, you think about, I mean, on the fixing side and so on, that's definitely out of my, you know, kind of out of my knowledge, you know, knowledge base. But if you think about, you know, so how cyber and physical security, of course, you know, are, are on this sort of collision path or, or, or fir firmly into that collision path, as opposed to being completely uh, siloed and, and, uh, and separate, um, why not rely on uh, devices that can be held more accountable and uh, and so on, rather than when you're ensuring the physical security, uh, rely on maybe some of the human resources you had. You know, a simple example, right? People checking into checking into a location. You know, does does a, a human need to need to do that? I mean, uh, hopefully the data centers and 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 so on are not using uh, you know pen and paper uh, visitor registry anymore. But why not have a device do that? And then again, backed up by a person if there's some kind of complication there. And and, and yeah, I mean, people are afraid that maybe it will replace jobs and maybe say it'll replace some jobs and then create new jobs. And, and we, we got the whole Luddite uh, story and whatever. Yep. But I just want to drill home the message that whether or not you're a small S MSP and you've got a, 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 you know, you are a distributor, right? Right. So just as Aaron's Allegion uh, goes through physical security dig distributors and maybe VARS is a, you know, is, is a VAR, right? VAR who, it, it, from Quebec is of our, I can see yep. them both bundling uh, this type of solution. And then if they're bundling this type of solution, what's what's to stop the divide? Surely we're all going to become VARs. Um, uh, but maybe that's a good question then. Is the best customer for a robot a reseller or a distributor that can rent a robot? Or do you think people are going to want to buy robots? I've seen both. I mean, I, I've seen both and I've seen um, more on the, you know, the subscription side. And you think about, you think about the software behind it, right? And, and it's changing. I mean, the innovation, the, the evolution of, uh, of uh, what the, uh, the, the, the software on board the devices uh, can do changes regularly. So what, what people are saying when they're looking at it, it's like, hey, I want to make sure that I not only have the the greatest or the coolest one today, I want to make sure that two years from now, I still have, you know, the latest one and the greatest one. And, you know, maybe the form factor, because of course there's a manufacturing piece to it, the form factors will change and that'll evolve and, and there'll be different, you know, kind of renderings. You know, you, you saw Romeo, Romeo is about seven feet tall and weighs a thousand pounds. You know, you're not going to have that running through your, uh, through your office complex or, or, uh, or something like that. So, and, and in terms of going to market, if we think about it from, from sort of the commercial side uh it's definitely to, to me it's part of a mixed service right so sometimes end users will have very specific items and 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 uh, that they want to solve you know by by uh by going to uh, to robotics, but oftentimes they have a bundle of security issues and a bundle of things that they want to solve. And whether that's on a cybersecurity side, the physical security side, the security services side, you know, that's something that uh, hey, why not 
reach out to that trusted partner that can offer the, all of those professionally and by bringing in these different, you know, these different, uh, different technologies as they, uh, as they go through. I, I can totally see it. There's economies of scale. You might want a robot for a small task, a big task, a constant task. I, I, I can totally see it. But then exactly. we, you know, in our previous panel, we talked about skills and we talked about this unicorn skills and let's face it, there is a technical skill shortage, much as our last panel was all about communications, right? <laughs> what skills will tomorrow's SOC analyst or architect need to be able to play or, or integrate robots? So that's the key. Of course, our approach is really through the security services, you know, kind of the security officer type type angle, right? So you think about that millions of frontline uh, security officers being bombarded by different types of technology, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a VMS access here, access control system, their visitor management systems, you know, over here and, and, you know, they get all trained up, they're on a site and, you know, with with some crazy turnover numbers, and, you know, some, sometimes upwards of 100 200%. Now you've got to bring in, you know, the new person. So now, okay, Mark sits down in the chair, he learns all these systems and then he moves on after you know after a couple of months so the key to me uh on on the interactions and, and the usability of of the devices um of course as a service is to make them as user friendly and 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 really that that um that user experience has to be just super intuitive you go from an alert to an interaction to to react into it to an escalation right it has to just be it has to be very very simple and you know one of my colleagues on the on the implementation side the client success side he says if i'm training someone who's using it in their day to day as that kind of extending securities reach type tool if it takes me more than half an hour to explain it because we've gone through a few examples he goes i'm having a bad day like it really has to be that that sort of intuitive and we all you know we all do you know use a lot of this technology uh, just on our own for, 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 for personal benefit, right? As I mentioned, kind of at the outset. So um, yeah, so it's becoming, I think it's becoming more and more uh, natural. But, you know, the other part that I talk about too is you don't do one without the two other, right? And to me, it's always, it's people process and the technology. So how can you kind of bring those things together to really, you know, ultimately deliver deliver better security services? And and it's not just, it's not just that, is it? It's It's freeing up a SOC analyst to do a more interesting task. Yes. And, and, and so, and so for the cyber folks out there, this, this, this will sound very familiar because when you introduce automation into your SOC, it's, I mean, it's sold on the basis of your SOC analyst will now be able to do something more meaty and won't be playing whack-a-mole with false alerts. And um, that's, you know, that, 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 that creates burnout that creates staff turnover, just as we just, talked about um, and and equally uh it may be beneficial for the man guard who now has something more messy to do more interesting um, and, John, and and safer and safer probably and safer. too right yeah exactly exactly so, um and and the oil and gas industry probably will lead the way in this because they absolutely do not like putting people out in harm's way they love uh using cameras to detect vibrations um instead of someone um you know, some of the oil and gas people even make people hold a handrail to go forward. And that is, <laughs> no, but that's not even a joke. They, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, John, uh, uh, who's up in, in a bit, says, uh, last panel, we talked about human empathy uh, leading security, and now we're talking about impersonal robotic experience. I don't, I don't see it quite that way. I, I see it much more yeah, as, a, as a tool. Yes, um, it's it's a, it's a tool, and and I think if if deployed properly, it becomes it, it's a tool that's approachable, right? And 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 I mean that's one of the reasons why that Romeo, yes, it's big and it's and, and it's tall and and so on, but why there are tablets on 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 either side of it. And you think about you know that security officer sitting in a, in, in a sock somewhere that can actually now do a face to face video call. So it's not this robotic you know sort of digitized voice coming at you saying you know you know uh, Fellum, how can I help you today? It's it's, you know, it's a, it's actually a person, you know, that's sitting there. So, so it allows that uh, allows that interaction, and and it allows for for proper deployment. So there are situations to I think you said it was John to John's comments about certain situations require that white glove type service, right? That really people as a premium and so on. Well, those environments, I think we want to keep them, you know, on the on the human resource side. But the patrol, you know, through an industrial site at uh, two o'clock in the morning, you know that 
doesn't interact with a lot of people, well, why not have why not have a device do that uh, some way or another? And, and, and Rochelle has made a nice point as well. Um, Rochelle said, you know, but properly programmed robots can be even more fair and equitable. Exactly. And, I mean, yes, of course, properly programmed is the key because, yep. you know, uh, input, output, all that. I think I think that's that would make people quite that would that would be music to some people's ears, especially now. Exactly. No, well said and good good point, Rochelle. Um so 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 what's next uh for 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 you and, and, and robotics as a service? Do you do you see this exploding as a sector? Is it is it gonna be quite niche? Um it, should we have it as more uh, a part of our MSS forums? So I think it's going to continue to grow and I think it is, it is exploding. I think it's not, you know, going to explode. I think it's exploding. I think there's still a lot of the, there's some, there, there's some curious people that are just kind of like, oh, you know, interesting. Let me go find out a little bit more. And there are others, you know, they're looking at their organization. They're saying, okay, the organization is telling me these are my risks. These are my issues and so on. Organizations telling me that I need to be efficient in the deployment and maybe, maybe change, you know, how, how things are going about uh, uh, or how we're going about securing, securing things. So there, there's definitely, you know, a, a healthy level of professional curiosity. There are adopters, you know, that are actively, you know, um, pushing the uh, pushing the solutions in the field in the wild as, as, as we say and 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 really testing it and and doing so in a very interesting mix you know sort of a, of, of human and uh, and device yeah i like it um i like it i well i've i've said to to you mark but i i do in november want to do an entirely robotics as a service for security yes. event um <sighs> Partly because I think it's so interesting and 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 and, and fun, and partly because I think it's time. It's time. It's definitely time. Looking I think forward to that one. Um, well, 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 Mark, thanks, thanks very much for 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 coming and uh, integrating this topic. I I do think in the next MSS forum we're going to have to have more robotics because we we're always talking about automation uh, and, and and so on. So so I think. RAS, which annoyingly ransomware as a service seems to have also taken, but let's ignore that. RAS is going to be really, really uh, a, a key topic. Um, Mark, thank you very much for, for coming on. Please give Mark a, a, a brilliant round of applause, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the audience. Thanks for having me, Phelan. Take care.